Hi, my name is Pete, and in this video, I'm going to pick up where I left off in my last video and demonstrate how to modify the table values for a content center family. So just to recap my last video, we took the standard square drive, pan head, machine screw, cross recess type, blah, 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 and we created a copy of it and put it into my custom content center library and then by right-clicking on it and editing the family properties we were able to rename the family to SQPNMS and we were able to designate a different folder for the actual generated content center files to reside. So what we're going to do today is we're actually going to right-click on this family and we're going to edit the family table. So this is where the guts of the fastener design live and so if we look inside of here we can see all the different sizes and all the information used to generate the files but what typically doesn't work so great for us is if we look at the file name area whoops file name the file name and the part number are highly technical ANSI names which really don't work for me so uh, nobody that I know calls it this they'll have some internal code so what we're going to do is we're going to edit the properties for the file name and the part number to be more to our liking and we'll also designate a key column so that we're selecting things just the way that we want to but before I get into that I'm actually going to show you how to make a custom column inside of Excel so right now we've got the thread description as numbers, threes, fours, fives, etc. But then down here there are fractional values. So this is all well and good, but I actually don't want the number sign in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, select this column, get it back to the way, you know, this is however we want that. And then I'm going to add a column next to it. And so this one, I'm going to call it fastener underscore size. That's actually the name of the property. And for the name of the column, I'm just going to call it fastener size. That's what actually shows up at the top. So I'll go ahead and hit OK. And so now we've got a new column just after thread description. So in this uh, example, I'm going to edit that using Excel. So I'll go ahead and click on the Excel icon. We actually have Excel open already, so let's wait for that blinking happy new table to come up. And you can make some pretty powerful edits in Excel that um, are just not available in the Content Center table. So we'll wait for that to come up. Hopefully it comes up. There we go. So after a few moments, shows up, and now we've got Excel. So you'll see all the way to the right, we've got that number three, four, etc. And all I want to do is basically just replace it with the number three without the number sign. Now, I could absolutely have keyed all that in and gotten bloody fingers and really gotten myself worn out. But the power with Excel is that we can go ahead and add formulas. But there's a trick to it. By default, every single field in here is text. And in order for formulas to work, we have to switch it to general. So you will have to switch your format to the general area. Make sure that uh, that will allow you to put in the formulas. And then if we click inside of the cell, we can look at all the different formulas that Excel offers. And I'm going to use the substitute. So the substitute allows me to grab a text string. I can substitute the old text, which is the number sign. And in the new text, I just do double quotes, and that signifies nothing. So I'm just going to basically replace my number three, remove the number sign, and then you just have the three as a digit. Go ahead and hit OK. See the result. Go ahead and slide this down. There's not too many. And the nice part about the substitute is it will cover all of the different sizes that I have, even the ones that I don't need, like the three-eighths and it'll leave them alone because there is no number sign. So this is the power of using Excel. It can really help expedite some of these processes. I'll save it and I'll close it. 
So now that we've got that after this loads up, so it'll take a minute to grind through the table, but you'll see my fastener size will update with actual numbers. All right, so the Excel sheet is updated, and you can see now that my thread description and my fastener size has that number sign parsed out. So that's exactly what I want. I'll go ahead and hit apply. This will engage the changes. This is a good practice as you're going through it. You want to hit apply to publish the changes. And then in the next step, I'm going to go ahead and edit the file name. So we'll right click on the file name and we can edit the column properties. So you could, if you wanted to, cell by cell, just key in values. I'll show that in just a second. But in general, when you want to be very effective, you can edit all sorts of data all at once using this column properties. So I'm going to go ahead and key in a column property. So for text strings, I'm going to call this sq underscore pn underscore ms and then do another underscore. So for text, you can use the quotes to differentiate that. And then for concatenating or putting multiple text strings together, you use the ampersand. So what I want to do is capture my fastener size, the, the pitch or the threads per inch, and then the nominal length. So I can come over here, grab this number. Down here at the bottom, there's my fastener size field. Add another ampersand quotes underscore ampersand and then I'm looking for thread per unit that's actually near the top uh, usually ah there it is thread per unit cool do one more underscore in quotes Oops. and then we'll do the ampersand for the nominal length so this is basically where you can create your own custom strings. I hit OK. And now we've got the square drive. So that's going to be my new designation for all of these sizes. Now I'm going to do the same thing for part number, but just really quickly, you could, if you wanted to, just key in here. And if you had like a fast and all number or something, you could just go ahead and type in whatever number you want. So you don't have to use the column properties. You can manually key them in as well. But those are just some things that uh, you can do to edit them. So I typically like the file name and the part number to match. So if I right click on that part number column heading, I can replace all this text. Just come over to this drop down and then you find file name. So I can basically say I just want it to be the file name. Now note, we overrode this one. So it is possible to edit the column, but still individually number the cells. And if you ever want to get rid of one, you just click on it, press the delete key, and now it will revert to whatever the column properties are. So it's a good idea to hit apply. And those are some of the general changes that I like to make. The last change that we're going to make is I don't use a lot of these sizes. So if we look here, we've got number threes, fours, fives, sixes, sevens. I don't use any of these. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on row one. Go all the way down here. I only use 1032s and I'll go down to row 82 in my case. Hold the shift key and I can right click and suppress these. So now I will have nothing less than a 1032. And even within that, I can kind of change the sizing. So right now we're at one and a quarter. I don't use one and a quarters, but I do use one and a halves, twos, two and a halves, and threes. So I can get rid of some of these that I don't use. In fact, I'll just get rid of all of those. So not only can you be very selective about your overall sizes, you can also be very particular about which individual links you want to stock. Right click and suppress. And that's as far as I'll take it for now. I'll go ahead and hit apply. And then you can click OK. So um, actually one more change. There's one thing I forgot. So another thing I typically do is not everybody recognizes what UNC and UNF mean. So you can come over here for something like key columns. 
and I can get rid of thread type, that's the UNF, UNS, UNC, and what I can do is get rid of that one by hitting the left arrow, and then find the thread per unit, click that. So typically length is more important than the pitch, so then I can rearrange them, so it's going to be the size of the fastener, then the length, then the pitch, or threads per unit. All right, and now those are the key columns it's going to be picking from, and if I want, I can just filter back to all the columns. Now we can click OK. Clicking OK just accepts the changes, and we can move on. And then we can test it out. We hit Done, open up our assembly, and what we'll see when we place it from the content center is that there's our square drive. So if we go ahead and double click on the square drive, you'll notice that we don't have the numbers 3 through 8. And if we look, there's a number 10, the size, and instead of UNF, it just says it's 32. So now we can pick a 10 by 2. So it's a 1032 by 2 fastener. Hit OK. Right click, place it grounded at the origin. We can right click here and we can look at the I properties, and you'll see that indeed the file name is that. We can see that it stores the file in our folder the way we want, and in the project area you see that you have the part number. So, hopefully you found this video helpful, but if you have any questions or comments, please leave them, be happy to address those, and most of all, have a most blessed day.